Hi class and welcome to our first unit in Access. This is Access Unit A. You should have your textbooks and work along with me. Um, for those of you that aren't enrolled in the class and just happened upon my video, you're welcome to watch and get some great tips on how to use this great program made by Microsoft. Uh, this is part of the Microsoft Office Suite. It is the database program made by Microsoft and again it's called Access. I like to think of it like Excel on steroids but that's just an analogy that I came up with. So with that said let's dive in and we're going to work through unit A in the book which starts on page 2 and this unit we're going to talk about the relational database understanding what that is, explore what a database is, create a database, create a table in Access, create primary keys in Access, relate to tables, and then enter data and edit data. So a lot to cover. Now, I strongly recommend before taking any quiz, doing any discussion posts, and all that fun stuff that you work through these pages in the book. It's very important not to skip this step. You enrolled in this class for a reason. You want to learn the program. Well, you're not going to learn it effectively unless you work through the workbook pages so that you have hands-on experience in how to use that program. I'm going to show you what that looks like for Unit A so you understand what you should be doing going forward with the future units. With that said, let's get started. So there were a file unit A files included in the module so you will need to download those and open up the quest travel dot a file so I have here the access unit A files and here's the quest travel a double click to open and you may have seen a yellow bar across the top that asked if you wanted to enable content you make sure you click enable if that happens and once you've done that then this middle screen would still be blank but on the left, you should see all these categories here, tables, queries, forms, and reports. This is all within that one file, believe it or not. So let's look over in our book. And the first step said to start access. Boom, we're there. Then it says to open the quest travel.a, which I've already done. Now step three says in the navigation pane, which is this pane over here on the left, double click the tours table to open it so here's the tables so we're going to double click on tours and then we see that data show here in the center screen in the navigation pane it says to also double click the tour sales query to open it so that's when we would go to this queries section and look for tour sales there's it is double click and then it says to double click any occurrence of heritage and type legacy so I'm going to double click here and it highlighted the entire word and I'm going to type legacy enter and then I'm going to hit down and look it automatically changed the rest that's relational for you then it says to double click the customer roster form to open it so if that would be under forms and then it says to just take a look at it and see right away we can see that it did still keep that change of legacy because all of these items are related to each other and we're going to take the word tour and change it to rally and then the middle part of the window and then it says double click the tour sales report to open it so let's scroll down here tour sales and then look at that it changed for the report as well so see how they all are speaking to each other all part of the same database excellent and then it tells us to go ahead and then the end of the page says to click the close in the top right corner that's this right here and there it goes now we've closed the program and we've successfully finished the first page now that we have successfully finished the first page, we are going to create a database. So that means we're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to go into my start menu here, reopen access. Here it is. And then it says to click the blank desktop database icon. That's this one here. It says blank database at the bottom. And there we go. So this is what a document would look like from scratch. And you notice there's nothing here on the left yet in the navigation pane. 
and then it says to click the view button on the fields tab to switch to design view. So we're already on the fields tab up here and then it says to click on the view and select design view. And it does ask for a table name and it tells us to use the table name customers and then click OK. Now you notice here it did create a nice table here for us to fill out. Excellent. It says type cust ID to rename ID to cust ID. Cust ID. Done. Then it says to press down to move to the first blank field name and then type first name. First name. It doesn't have a space there. Then it says to type last name. Down again phone, down again, and then birthday, down one more time. Now it says to click short text in the birthday row and change to date and time because a birthday wouldn't be short text, it would be date and time. There we go. And this is going to auto restrict our field so that if someone's filling out this specific field that it would allow for only a date to be used. Once we have done that, it says to click the view button to switch to data sheet view. So let's give that a try. And it says you must first save the table in order to do so. It says click yes. So sure, go for it. It says press tab to move to the first name field. Done. And it says to type your first name. So my first name is Melody Cronister. And I'm going to make a phone number here. Oh, it's to field. Birthday. Done. Then it says to press escape to edit birthday entry. Okay, so it's going to show us. I'm going to go back in here. It's getting a little ahead of myself. And it says to use a birthday 13280. So let's first see what that's like. Aha! Uh -huh. It's smart. It knows there's not 32 days in January. So let's go change this to 31. And look, it works now. And then it says press tab and enter two more sample records using realistic data. So it wants us to make up a couple more. So Joe Dirt. 222-333-4444, January 31st, 1981, and then how about Sally, Sally Dirt, 333-444-5555-13182, there we go. So now we've populated the additional records I get asked. Then it said to right click the customer's Ta customers table tab. So let's see. There we go. Then click close to close the customer table. So it did close it out of this main window here, but you notice the table is still here on the left. And we have officially created our first database. So hats off to us. Make sure you go through that exercise yourself. Now the next page we're going to create a table. It says to click the Create tab on the ribbon. So there's the tab. Then it says to click the Table Design button in the Tables group. So Table Design. And there we go. And then it says enter the field names and data types shown in Figure A8. So that's on the page right next to it, on page 9. And it gives us some field names to use. So that's Comment ID. Comment, then comment date, then cust ID. Okay, done. Then it says to click the view button to switch to data sheet view. Go for it. And it's going to prompt us to name it again, so let's see what it says to name it this time. It says comments. Click OK. It's 
giving us a prompt about a primary key. And it says that to click no when prompted, so no. Now a primary key, I, I want to focus on this for a second here, it contains a unique data point for each record. We need to identify our primary key well, if we want them to speak to each other, the various tables, which we will do later. So for now we're going to click no, we clicked no, but just know we're going to come back to that. Now next it says to press tab to move to the comment field and type interested in future tours to New Zealand. So let's do that. Then it says to press tab, type 1715. Then it says tab again and type 1 in the customer ID field. Now it says to point to the divider line between the comment and comment date and drag so we can see the whole comment alrighty. So it's right here, similar to what you would do in Excel. There we go. Then it says right click the comments table tab. Oh, let's see and then click close, and if prompted, click yes to save. So now we have two tables over here. So now we're gonna move on to creating a primary key. This is important if you want the tables to talk to each other, connect in some way. So let's look, it says to right click the comments table, and then in the navigation plane, click design view to open it. So this is the information we typed. It says to click the comment ID field if not already selected and then select primary key in the design tab tools group. So there it is and you see the little key shows up here. Then it says to right click the comments table tab and close it. Do you sure you want to save? Yes. And then there you go, it's closed. Then it says to right click the customers table and then select design view and it has, it's smart, so it's already ma marked the cust ID as a primary key. And then the last step on the page says to right click the customer table tab and click close. So there we go, we have finished another page. Okay, now we just have three more pages left to go. So next we're going to relate two tables. So we have our two tables over here on the left, so let's see what this looks like. Step one says to click the database tools tab. There we go. Then click Relationships button. So here's the Relationships button. Shows our two tables right here. In the Show Table dialog box, double click Customers and double click Comments, then click Close. Double click, double click, close. There they are. Beautiful. So drag the Cust ID in the Customers field list to the Cust ID field in the Comments field. So Cust ID to Cust ID. And it's just confirming that we're saying that those are related to each other. We're going to enforce referential integrity. And then it says to click create. So we just created that relationship. Then step five says to right click the relationships tab. Right click. Click close. And it asks if we want to save. Yes. Then double click the customers table in the navigation pane to open it in data sheet view customers. So you notice we were having to right click and select design view to look at it that way when double clicking the default is this data sheet view. Then it says to click the expand button to the left of the first record. And we open it we notice that it says interested in trips to New Zealand so it's connecting to that comment we made because the cust ID and comment ID are related, they're, to, they're both one. Great, excellent. Okay, so close that. This is to enter two more comments as shown in figure A14. I'm gonna let you do that yourself. It's a great practice. And then it says to close the customer's table, then click yes if prompted to save changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Yes. And we just related two tables. We saw them work together and extract data from each other. This is what Access is all about. And just wait and see what it can do. This is just scratching the surface, but I think you're starting to see 
how helpful this could be in building your own database, whether you're a work from home mother or father or working at a business, keeping track of your stuff is important. And many times you have multiple spreadsheets. You might be using Excel, which is great, but what if you wanted those spreadsheets to talk to each other? That's a database, that's where access comes in. Now I'm going to let you do the last two pages yourself, which is entering data and editing data. You'll make sure you do those last two pages, pages 14 and 16, and then complete the concept review quiz and the homework assignment. I hope this video was helpful for you as you are just starting to be exposed to this great program. And if you have any questions, make sure you post them in the Q&A discussion board. Until next time, signing off.